Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I started my video out with a, a different topic and then it just went off the rails and I started pursuing another one. So this video is meant to be about the stereotypes and mystery around sex with trans girls but it ended up becoming a comparison between when I was a gay male to what it's like being a trans woman, um, what it's like uh, you know, going from one world to another, the pros and cons of both. Um, so, sorry about that, but um, let's start the video. Just what I've experienced, but I think what I've been through is very similar to other trans girls. So, my story is probably a fairly common one. I went from being in the gay world where I was not, I mean, I was a good looking guy, I guess, but I found gay guys to be ultra ultra like demanding in terms of how you look you literally have to look like a swimsuit male model to get half decent looking guy yes that sounded horrible but it was the way it was in the gay world i found them to be extremely fussy also i wasn't i guess what you would call a masculine male so i guess i was also kind of at the bottom of the Kind of pecking order or the ladder in the gay world whereas when i transitioned i went from being at the bottom to the top <laughs> excuse the phrase so i found it quite interesting going from being like not overly desirable and struggling to get good looking guys i struggled to go get dates um but when I transitioned, I suddenly went from being kind of common, I guess, to being quite rare. This video is sounding arrogant, but I know the trans girls watching will understand what I mean, that we are rare and we're not that common. So, of course, um, when you meet someone attractive within that field, that is quite rare you suddenly become quite desirable like a commodity I guess and I was extremely um, desirable <laughs> sorry this video is a bit cringe but it's it's what I went through and it's what I've experienced um, where oh god where was I going with this so going from being like a kind of nobody to being quite rare was uh, a lot to handle and I think I um, kind of didn't know how to handle that so I was just like a kid in the candy store and having a great time so I could literally choose any guy I wanted on Grinder, and I'd never like ever experienced anything like that before and we're not talking like average guys they were good-looking very attractive guys that um, in the gay world would have been considered gods because they were um, well basically just straight guys that are super hot and it was you know in the gay world that is like the most <laughs> desirable thing is to get with a straight guy so yeah it was just like having a power that I didn't know how to handle and the negative downside to that is basically um, I was I think damaging myself emotionally by being so freely kind of available uh, to guys and I just um, think that I lost a bit of respect for myself without knowing it so how do I put this I think I became a bit of a loose woman if you get what I mean and um, my kind of filter wasn't there so much and I I kind of programmed myself to believe that I was only worthy of sex in the end. The pattern seemed to be um, get on Grinder, speak to a hot guy. Like, honestly, I couldn't keep up with the messages. They would just be like raining down and um, yeah I mean I guess I'm in New Zealand so there's not many trans girls here so maybe there's just like a huge 
bigger pool of guys that are looking for us and there's a very small pool of trans girls so maybe it's different in your country and you if you're in a bigger bigger city but we're not in the biggest city it's, it's a very small city so like I said it's a bit of a commodity situation so if the product is unavailable there's going to be like more people are going to want it that sounded bad I think you get what I mean like I was just inundated with guys there were I guess a kind of pattern of messages so they ranged from um, what are you doing now do you want to hook up right now to um, you're really pretty trying to start a combo that way um, and often offers of money would come through or um, people offering to pay if you were just ignoring them I never took up obviously any of that and I would always um, like literally just block them um, and you'd also get trolls who if you ignored them would get quite angry and abusive like like verbally abusive um, and I actually got banned from Grindr because someone I think I know who it was but they were a complete weirdo <sighs> They were a real freak when I, I went on a date with a guy who I've got to say was super weird. I did not like him. He was very odd, arrogant, self-centered, just a prick and um, very, very weird. Like I said after the date, nice to meet you. Um, hope you have a good day. And then he said, if you don't want to see me again, why don't you just tell me? Um, you're obviously full of lies, you're this and that, and it was just out of nowhere, so what I thought was confirmed on that date, and he would create new profiles and message me, and he did it again, and I said, I know who you are, and there's no way I want to meet you again, you're just a weirdo, go away, and I got banned the next day, and I think he reported me, um, saying I was fake, a fake profile. I did contact Grindr and asked them why I was banned. It was some generic email and I thought I'm never going to hear from them but I actually did hear from them and they asked me to prove I was real by um, writing my name on paper and holding it up and taking a photo and sending it to them. So that guy thought I was like they thought I was fake because of my pictures. This video guys I'm going to lose you you're all going to unsubscribe. <laughs> I don't actually see myself as me. I've had surgery, I've dyed my hair, um, hormones, all sorts of things. I often don't see myself as myself. I feel like I'm a little like creature in my brain pulling levers and just inside this body that's not mine. I don't see me as me, it's kind of weird. But I just happen to have an attractive, I guess, outer body that I'm in. So I'm guess I'm quite lucky but um, <laughs> I often look at this from the outside not from the inside uh, so I sent the photo and I was then reinstated on Grindr so I was quite like surprised by that um, but that's the kind of level of I guess maliciousness that you can get on an app like that um, I think guys think often that a trans girl is just easy and they're desperate they're gonna take anyone and actually we have standards as well so you know if you're rejected it's not just it's not because it's just because we weren't into you and that happens to anyone I've had people reject me who are not like I'm not their type but it feels like there's this it, it feels like there's this expectation that because you're trans you're kind of easy so another kind of message I would get is um, oh let's hook up I'm free now um, when do you want me to come over or do you want to come to mine like and often these are guys that are new to uh, the grinder app or talking to trans girls they have this like newbie idea that we're desperate and we'll take them straight away um, and I think it, it plugs into porn as well and the way we're portrayed in um, the media TV and stuff like we're prostitutes we are down and outs we are the lower of society so we are obviously easy and some of these guys that would have this attitude have maybe not done so well with cisgender girls and then just go oh, I'll get a trans girl because they'll take me and it's just like I'm sorry but you know we are people as well and we're going to also have 
preferences. So the guys that were like that were just quite sort of like, like I was just going to go and see them, but I just was like, nah, sorry, not my time. It was, it was really weird going from the gay world where I would be that person trying my, all my tricks to get that guy to want to have a date with me or get with me so I was the one that was constantly fishing whereas I had when I transitioned I became like the the hunted I guess so I was getting I was just sitting there I never ever really messaged anyone on Grindr I would just like put the put the rod in the water and pull up the fish and it was just fishing really didn't really message guys um they would message me oh my god sorry <laughs> and so it was weird going from finding it struggling to rejecting guys and being really really picky about who i was seeing i did not get any joy from saying no to guys i always felt guilty i always felt um mean and not good about it um, and I found it really difficult actually to say no sometimes and I don't like ghosting I think that's the worst thing you can do you just say to someone I'm not you're not my type however I did get burnt by that on a number of occasions where they would get nasty and say well you're just a slut bitch you're just a prostitute trans or whatever you know all this ridiculous stuff and so I did get burnt and I did think, oh, I don't know if I want to be honest anymore. Um, but uh, it was odd going from finding it difficult to having to do, be on the other side. I didn't like doing the rejection because I know I'd been rejected a lot as a gay guy. I also overcame that guilt by remembering that most of these guys are not here for honourable reasons they are here to use me as a sex object and a fetish they would never date me so i in the end i thought well screw it if you're just going to use me then i'm just going to give you the yes no not my type answer and not really care if a guy was respectful enough and said look i'd love to have a date with you and i found him attractive of course i would be completely different but i guess i got a bit jaded um and got a little bit sick of all the sex and stuff because I'd gone from not much to just having my choice of who I wanted. Um, in the end it didn't really satisfy me and I was looking for a relationship. That side of things, my god, that was difficult. I found it easier to find a relationship in the gay world than the trans world. I guess in the gay world like there's an expectation of, of sex but there's also an expectation of a relationship and that is normalized so to you know I think there's an equal amount of what the I'm having like a major moment here guys what the fuck I think there's like an equal amount of guys that are looking for relationships and sex whereas in the trans world there is pretty much 90% maybe more of guys that are just looking for an experience or sex so yeah, it's, it's like extreme in terms of being able to get a guy for sex, a good looking guy, but it's also extreme in terms of not being able to get that person to want to have a date with you and commit because of all the fear of being labelled as gay and I do not have a problem with gay guys, I was a gay guy. Um, not an issue for me, but it seems to be a massive issue for um, straight guys being labelled as gay. And I guess that's really homophobic to be like, oh my God, I'm worried I'm going to be labeled as gay. Like, who fucking cares? Like, <laughs> nobody gives a shit. But the straight world seem to care about that. And cisgender girls are very weird about that. I've covered it in one of my videos. They're all just so ridiculous. It's like, you're all going to be dead very soon because we don't live long on this planet do you really want to spend all that time worrying about what people think just follow what the hell you want in life guys so that was my experience and um so i found that i was just getting an extreme amount of like sexual stuff and it was great but not much of the loving side I'm realizing this video is going for really long and i kind of 
like the subject I've gone on a tangent with because I didn't really think I would really talk about that. So I'm going to talk about um, the original topic um, in another video, I think, which is the mystery around sex with trans girls and the, um, the um, stereotypes and all of that. But I just think the transition from being gay to trans, and now I'm a straight woman, I guess, is very interesting. Um, it's a life of privilege if you are considered attractive or you can pass. Um, you seem to be kind of a desirable, like one of the most desirable trans girls if you're pre-op, passable and attractive. It seems like you're really at the top there. And um, so I was seeing, I really, my God, my hair is just killing me. Oh, it just looks so uptight. It's just, okay, back, back to, right, back to the video. Um, so I was getting with guys that were like the most hottest desire. I'm talking model, like you would see this kind of guy on magazine cover, Gucci ad, Versace. Um, I'm not joking. The guys I've seen and I've shown friends are like, what? How the f did you get that? That guy is so hot. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I did get emotionally attached often because of the beauty of what I was seeing. Um, so this dream world I was in that, I'm sorry, but just the hottest guys, I was just loving it. But at the same time, I was starting to, it was dawning on me that these guys don't want to, don't want to see me beyond the bedroom. And often they had issues with their own sexuality or getting all confused and questioning it. So I was feeling guilty, like almost dirty, like I was, I was like this doorway they had opened and I was like the forbidden kind of fruit or really taboo and I don't really like feeling like that because I'm just a normal person who pays their taxes, goes to work, do all that stuff. I'm not the devil. <laughs> um, so I just started getting quite down on being trans and um, the shine kind of wore off of it a bit. I did get like a perverse joy in going to say like going to a gay friend's house for a party or dinner and bringing a hot guy with me <laughs> and just being like I am the queen I am at the top remember when I couldn't get this sort of thing like you in your dreams just <laughs> that's what I was thinking like I love just the glory of just ascending to the top and having the model with me and you can see the jealousy on their faces like and I loved rubbing that in certain people's faces because I could tell when I first transitioned they thought I was tragic I did not pass very well um, and that I know I was a joke um, and I know a lot of the gay people I knew were talking about me like I was this scary freaky tranny and then I walk in with this it became like a status like symbol to have a hot guy and then you know do an Instagram post or something and have all the the jealousy like there are some quite dark and negative sides to being desired and feeding off of people's like jealousy or um, desires and geez I mean I still kind of do like it <laughs> I like like alpha male to be seen because he's so hot and good looking and I do enjoy being with him um, I feel proud of that and I feel proud of my transition that I've raised myself to a level that I can get the attention of someone that is that attractive which I couldn't do before so um, in another way it kind of makes me well confirms to me that the world is a very shallow place and it's kind of based on how you look and I know exactly what it's like to be treated like sh because of the way you look. I went through a very awkward phase as a teenager and in my early 20s I went from being a really cute kid to just a super ugly golem like person. I'm not lying when I say I was not attractive. And then 
and then I went on hormones um, I sort of filled into my face more it suits me better to be female and I had surgery dyed my hair you know done a few things and bam I'd like bought the key to the club and walked in and it's like the club I was never allowed in so I understand how shallow people are and I have a kind of um, disdain for uh, people that don't understand what they've got and they're just arrogant people so I know what it's like to be on both sides of the fence I know what it's like to be gay and struggling to get attention and yes I became a more attractive male um, eventually but just was never good enough and then I transitioned and now I'm finding I get a lot of attention by guys that are into trans they just view me as highly desirable and will try their best to get me and then I also get cisgender males who are straight come on to me in bars or clubs um, and flirt with me in just a shop or whatever and I've never experienced that before so it is it's a great thing I'm not gonna lie like I would rather this than the previous way I was I can never forget where I came from what I was like and how I was treated so I have a really like a huge respect for where I am now and like I said before I don't see myself as myself I, I just feel like I'm in someone else's body um, but I have a huge respect for it and I've worked hard for it and paid a lot of money and you know worked really hard to get to this point and I um, will never take that for granted um, so my final thoughts I guess on you know going from gay to a trans woman I am a lot happier in this world even though it has a lot of downsides to it there's a lot of really dark and negative things that come with being trans such as not being respected being used as a sex object um, being lonely um, all the pressure to be pretty the gay world had a lot of sex it's, it's very sexual and it's very based on your looks and your body and how straight acting you are you are highly desirable if you're a straight acting muscly top gay guy like you are desirable um, you won't have any problems dating um, and because that's what the gay guys want they seem to want a straight guy um, any sign of femininity you're going to struggle um, and then in the trans world it's highly desirable if you're pre-op and you pass and you and I don't even think you have to be that pretty to be desirable to be honest because of the lack of choice God, that sounds bad but you know we're so rare that we are kind of elevated to a certain level um, but if I'm to compare relationships but in the two worlds the gay relationships are quite dramatic they're almost like Hollywood relationships they have a very small chance of surviving and there's always like something greener on the other side you know there's a lot of cheating there are some really decent gay guys and I'm not like god I'm not being like hateful on gays but it's just I've been in that world and I know what it's like um, the, the trans world for dating is the same and it's quite extreme so you've got to be very savvy about who you're dating and who you give your heart to so I did you know I have had a relationship um, with a guy prior to alpha male who was absolutely amazing and so my feeling was that this was a different type of relationship of built on respect and um, looking towards the future and I found that when I met a guy who was looking for a relationship a straight guy obviously because straight guys are only into women so I found they were a different level like they had this really good, sweet honest desire to build something with you and I hadn't experienced that like in the gay world it was like oh my god I've got to keep working out I've got to um, make sure that I look better than you know Josh and Brad and whatever and like 
we're always going to the clubs I'm so sick of it but I've got to keep going and like it's go 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 whereas the straight world is more kind of seem more chill and more like you and me we're gonna be in a relationship and it's just so sweet and loving and made me feel very safe so that was kind of what I found was the difference there actually are similarities between the gay world and the trans world in the gay world it's very based on porn so um, like looking like a porn star desiring a porn star um, and it's I think it's because it's a lot porn is probably what most gay teenagers have seen it's what they grow up with there's not many role models so it's kind of very sexual world um, and that could also be why relationships are very fleeting and it's the same in the trans world you've got like no role models and it's porn that you often see um, that forms your view of the trans woman now we don't look at trans porn so we we model ourselves on cisgendered women and cisgender role models often but it's the men that are uh, uh, so a straight man's opinion is formed or their view of a trans woman through pornography so that is also probably why we're not taken seriously for relationships it's just not normalized it's not taught at school it's not in literature or movies or the media and I've talked about that before my issues with the media around not having normal role models so I guess we're um, we have similar issues in both worlds but I do find that when you find that needle in a haystack that guy that wants to date you and he's straight amazing like completely different uh, kettle of fish so much so that I felt like oh my god I'm like we're in the suburbs he's talking about adopting a kid like what happened to me um, I obviously I don't have an issue with that and commitment and I, I love all that it's just so what I want um, but we uh, in other videos I've talked about we had issues because my hormones the whole thing just derailed it was a train wreck and to this day I feel um, bad about how it ended um, and sad about what he went through that he was just such an amazing amazing guy and um, I think <clears throat> being trans is like a filter if you know a guy gets through that filter and dates you and wants to date you he's like so rare as well because those types of guys are so strong in their way they don't have an ego they don't care about what people think they they are just so centered in their life that that's really rare in itself you've got so-called alpha males who are the types online who will say if you're a trans you're a dude or if you get with the trans you're gay and it's like you think you're like strong you think you are um, like masculine you're actually showing how insecure you are about yourself you're projecting basically you have an issue with yourself um, why are you concerning yourself so much with what other people do in the bedroom um, so if you meet a guy who will date you as a trans sorry I'm just putting my socks on um, they're special like they don't care about what people think um, and they don't have <clears throat> an ego they have to pander to and um, make feel good they only care about what makes them feel good and it's kind of the opposite in the gay world if you're feminine you are treated not so well and um, gay guys don't really want to date you so much um, and there's this judgment as well in that world and it's, uh, it's anyway I'm just glad I'm not really part of that right now I'm in a relationship so I'm kind of protected from that I did not enjoy being single not my thing I hated it so that's my comparison between the gay and the the trans world I know this video went right off topic but um, 
I will talk about the other topic in another video, I promise. All right, guys, I'm off to see Alpha Male for a night of pizza and drinkies and good times. So I'll see you later. Bye.